Okay, so um, again, uh, here we're going to look at Stokes's theorem, and we want to look at orientation. This is one of the uh, sometimes can be a little uh, difficult to grasp. So um, this diagram, I'm going to try to help, try to get clear uh, and a clear idea of how it works. So basically, there are a couple of things you can do. First, of, first of all, let's understand that we are looking at a surface integral. Stokes's theorem connects a surface integral to a line integral. So imagine this is a surface, it's a hemisphere, for the sake of argument, or some surface S. Let's call it S, okay? So this is some surface S, and let's say we have this curve here, C. Now, what's happening is, this is the bottom of this uh, hemisphere you can think of, or, or it could be a paraboloid, or any surface, uh, for that matter. The important thing to understand is, in red, you see the, the, normal, uh, the normal vector, okay? Uh, the normal to this surface, okay? It's an outward normal. Now, if this is an outward normal and the the curve is such that what you can do is, at this point, is you can use what's called the right-hand rule. And the right-hand rule means that uh, you point your, uh, your, from your right, with your right hand, you point the, your thumb point towards the normal, the surface, and then your fingers curl towards the direction that C is in. So, and that is called a positive orientation, okay? So that's called a positive orientation. So you curl your fingers, and the direction of curl, now if, if, if the actual direction of the curve is in the opposite direction to the curl, we say it's negatively oriented. So, in this case, the way I've drawn it, this is positive, uh, this is positive orientation, okay? So this is positively oriented. So it's positive orientation as I've shown you. And this is what is required if we want to use Stokes' theorem. We have to have the surface set up this way. So you have normals that are, um, for instance, pointing uh, outwards. So this is outward normal. This is another outward normal. And, you, and by the way, it's important for you to understand that, that this normal is some unit normal vector and that could be any unit normal vector and that you, you can easily choose anything, for instance. But anyway, so as long as that's pointing, you point your thumb in the direction of the normal, you curl your fingers and the on your right hand, of course, and the direction of the curl gives you the direction, uh, positive orientation, if, if your C is oriented that way. Now, mostly in these types of questions, unless the it's a force field where you actually have these kinds of movements and you know where what's the direction of the force field um, most of the exam type questions or test questions or exercise questions no orientation is given it must be either specified or it's left open to you if it's left open to you then you usually you, you set up the question so that stokes's theorem can be applied so that's why some people get confused as to who defines this orientation and what does it have to do with it why do I? Why can't it always be positive? Well, it if this surface re represents some real dynamic system, then that system has a, has a life of its own, or is oriented a certain way, and is therefore you know the 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 force field could have its own direction. Now you could have outward normal uh, being the force in the outward normal direction, or it could be an inward normal direction. So, as I said, practically speaking, that's where it comes from. But for applying Stokes' theorem, all you need to know is use the right-hand rule, and I'll tell you. And this is positive orientation. The opposite direction to this is negatively oriented. So one other idea I want uh, that hopefully will help understand what Stokes' theorem is trying to achieve, or what's actually going on, how th how the idea is connected is that if you think about this, that there's a surface, and um, you're looking at the surface from the top. If you look at this paraboloid or this hemisphere, whatever it is, from the top, what you'd see is the circle. You'd see the C that you see in the diagram. So if you see, look at it from the top, what you're looking at is in the XY plane, you're looking at the curve C. So the surface, if we were to calculate the entire surface, it would not just be uh, the hemisphere or the paraboloid, but the bottom as well of the sphere because it's a finite solid obviously, and you're calculating its surface. So the curve C, which is the disk, essentially, it represents or encloses the disk. So you have a hemisphere and you have the disk, and so you have two surfaces. So in order, in order to calculate this as a surface integral, you'd have to have S1, break this up into two surfaces, okay? So this will be your uh, S1 here, 
okay and the circle the disk would be s2 so it's quite complicated if you think about it but however using stokes's theorem it simply becomes one single curve c and the way to think about it is imagine looking at it from the top and you see in the xy plane the curve c so the 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 entire surface boils down to just as, as a line integral it's a very cool and powerful theorem i hope that helps you understand how stokes's theorem works and how you can actually use it in in, in computations